Habari, President Kenyatta, let me just reiterate what I said at the summit earlier uh, to you and the people of Kenya. Thank you for the extraordinary welcome that you've given me and for the same kindness that you've shown me since my first visit uh, to Kenya nearly 30 years ago. I'm proud to return as the first U.S. President to ever visit Kenya while still in office. Uh, I need to give a, a special acknowledgement to everybody in Alego and Kogelo and Kisumu. I, uh, I'm well aware, however, that the enthusiasm that we're seeing today uh, from my visit is a reflection of something bigger, and that's the desire among the Kenyan people for a deeper partnership with America, and that's why I'm here. My work with President Kenyatta today has been rooted in our shared recognition that the interests of both our nations and the lives of both our peoples can be advanced if our countries deepen and expand our cooperation, and that's what we've agreed to today. First, I want to salute the Kenyan people for their hard-won progress in strengthening their democracy. Millions voted for the new constitution, one of the most progressive in Africa, with its strong protections for freedom of expression, assembly, and the press, and its emphasis on equality and against discrimination. The election two years ago was competitive and largely peaceful. Kenya has a determined, active, feisty press as we see here today, and as I've said elsewhere, a free press helps make a nation stronger and more successful, and it makes us leaders more effective because it demands greater accountability. Kenya has a vibrant civil society, which is essential for any democracy, and I look forward to meeting tomorrow with representatives from civil society who stand up for the dignity and the rights of all Kenyans. Dignity begins, of course, uh, with the ability to provide a decent life for our families. And today, President Kenyatta and I agreed to expand the econo uh, economic partnerships between our peoples that can provide broad-based prosperity. We will extend student and business visas for up to five years for Kenyans traveling to the United States and for Americans traveling to Kenya. This will make it easier for university students to complete their studies and for businesses to make long-term plans. Our governments are also working to launch direct flights between Kenya and the United States as soon as possible. As part of our Young, leaders, uh, young African Leaders Initiative, we'll also continue to support promising Kenyan youth as they work to become future leaders in business, civil society, and government. Now that we've renewed the African Growth and Opportunity Act, or AGOA, for another 10 years, I discussed with President Kenyatta, how we can expand our economic cooperation. And we're especially focused on infrastructure and energy, two keys to economic growth. Our Power Africa initiative is supporting Kenya's goal of achieving its national energy needs, electricity for Kenyans, by 2030. And this includes innovations that bring power to rural Kenyans who are off the grid, as I saw earlier today uh, at the Global Entrepreneurship Summit. I also want to commend Kenya, a leader in clean energy, for announcing its post-2020 target to limit carbon emissions as part of our fight against climate change. Together, we are confronting insidious threats to Kenya's prosperity. Uh, President Kenyatta, I want to commend you on your announced commitment to rooting out corruption. With the joint commitment we've agreed to today, the United States will offer advice and technical assistance to support Kenya as it takes additional steps to increase transparency and accountability and to strengthen institutions that fight corruption. So we're making important commitments and now we need to work together to fulfill them. Because if, if Kenya can put in place the habits and institutions of good governance, it can help unleash even greater growth and investment and prosperity for the Kenyan people. And that will be good for everybody. Our countries are also close partners in the fight against poachers and traffickers that threaten Kenya's world-famous wildlife. The United States has a ban already on the commercial import of elephant ivory. I can announce that we're proposing a new rule 
that bans the sale of virtually all ivory across our state lines, which will eliminate the market for illegal ivory in the United States. On security, the United States and Kenya are already strong partners. And today we reaffirm that we stand united in the face of terrorism. Earlier, I had the opportunity to meet with survivors and families of victims of the bombing of our U.S. Embassy in 1998 in the face of despicable violence, such as the attack on Garissa University College and the Westgate Mall. The Kenyan people have shown incredible resolve and, and remarkable resilience. I also want to pay tribute to the sacrifices of Kenyan forces who serve in the African Union-led Michigan a uh, mission against al-Shabaab in Somalia, and to thank Kenya for hosting so many Somali refugees who are the victims of al-Shabaab. Today, we discuss deepening our security cooperation. As part of our security governance initiative, our governments signed an action plan yesterday in which we'll support Kenya's efforts to strengthen its judiciary, police, and border security. We also discuss broader efforts to counter violent extremism here in Kenya and around the world. Efforts that are advanced when there is rule of law, respect for human rights, a space for civil society and peaceful dissent, and when we welcome all communities as our partners. All our nations are going to have to work together uh, in order for us to be successful. We also had the opportunity to discuss regional security issues, uh, and we focused in particular on the terrible conflict in South Sudan, which has taken so many lives uh, that cause unbearable suffering for the South Sudanese people. Uh, the situation is dire, and we agree that the best way to stop the fighting is for South Sudanese leaders to put their country first with a peace agreement that ends the fighting. We also discussed Burundi, where the recent elections were not credible, and we're calling on the government and the opposition to come together in a dialogue that leads to a political solution to the crisis and avoids the loss of more innocent life. And finally, we're going to keep investing in the health and well-being of our people. Our Feed the Future initiative is focused on reducing hunger, malnutrition, and poverty. We're working together to ensure that girls have access to education and that women are protected from violence. Uh, today, I can announce that Kenya will be part of our Dreams initiative to help keep adolescent girls safe and AIDS free. And across Africa, Kenya and the United States will keep working to strengthen public health systems and deal with outbreaks and diseases before they become epidemics. Together, we can save lives. So, President Kenyatta, thank you for the progress and new commitments that we've made today. I know that Kenya faces persistent challenges, as does the United States, but I will tell you that every time I come here, I'm struck by the dynamism and the hopefulness, the determination and the talent of the Kenyan people. And I look forward to the opportunity to speak to the people of Kenya tomorrow about the future that we can build together. So, asante sana.